Hey there, welcome to Automation Bro. In this video, we will cover what is API testing, what are the different types of API testing, and the advantages of doing API testing. Also, make sure to stick around till the end as I will be showing you how to perform API testing using REST API console. So let's get started. So API testing focuses on testing the business logic or the functionality of the application. So using API testing, you're also validating the data responses you're getting back as well as you can ensure your API are performant and secure. So you're testing the core functionality of the application without actually touching the UI or worrying about the look and feel of the application. With API testing, you can either test a single request or integration between multiple requests and then validate the response that's being returned by the server. So what do I mean when I say validate the response? Well, let's take a look at an example. Let's say you're testing the user's API here you can validate the response you're getting back. For example, you can ensure you're getting the right properties being returned, that is your ID, name, email, etc. As well as ensure the type of value that's being returned. For example, email should be in the right format. The name should have X number of characters. So this way you can build multiple set of test cases to ensure your API is doing exactly what you're expecting it to. Now let's take a look at different types of API testing we can do. So the first one we already talked about functionality testing it's basically testing your business logic of the application so for example if i'm making an api call to my sign up route i expect it to create a new user for me and provide the details of that new user in the response so this i'm testing the core functionality of my application next is load testing so with this we are making sure our apis can handle the load for example if thousand users are hitting the api at the same time our API should be able to handle that load, meaning it should not break or take lots of time to return the response. Next, security testing. So security testing and penetration testing kind of fit under the same umbrella. So with security testing, you're checking if your APIs are secure. So let's say we don't want someone to be able to access the application data without going through proper authentication process and having the appropriate token. Another example would be we don't want one user to be able to access the data of another user. And with penetration testing, you're basically going one level deeper and making sure hackers or attackers cannot break your application or access your company's sensitive data. And then we have our negative testing. So here we are ensuring the APIs are able to handle wrong or in invalid input. So for example, users should not be able to enter invalid email format or register without entering email or password. Okay, now that we have looked at different types of API testing, let's talk about some of the advantages of doing API testing. So the first one is that you get early application access. So in most cases, your API will get created first and then UI will integrate with the API. So this way you have early access to the application functionality and you can validate if the business logic is working as expected. Also with this, you'll be able to catch bugs earlier in the development process instead of waiting all the way until the end when your UI will be ready. Next, API testing will be, can be performed a lot quicker than browser testing. So specifically when you get to automation, API tests run a lot faster than browser test as you're skipping the entire UI layer and jumping directly to the API layer. At the same time, you're also increasing your test coverage by testing your APIs. Next, API testing is language independent. As the data is exchanged via JSON or XML, so you can pretty much use any language for test automation that can handle JSON or XML data. And the last one, my favorite, which is API tests are much easier to maintain as they are less flaky and more reliable. So since you don't typically change your business logic or APIs as often compared to the UI. So this way it makes it really easy for you to be able to manage your API test. Okay, now let's take a look at how we can perform API testing. Okay, so I'm on this website, gorest.co.in. So this is the website we will be using for our manual testing as well as when we will be doing our automation. So this website provides it with a bunch of fake data and some APIs that we can use. So what you're going to do is when you first come to this website, you have to register. So you can go to the registration and it's free. Once you register, just go to my profile and in your API access, you will see a new access token being generated for you. Now you can change this access token. So if by when you just click on generate a new access token and do update, this will just generate a new token for you, which you can use for your API testing. All right. So I'm going to go back to home. And what I will do now is open the REST console here. So actually, I already have this in this new tab. So what this REST console do is basically it lets us access all these APIs through this REST console. 
So if you notice here, I have the authorization. So in this authorization, I have this token. This is the same token that we just saw in this my profile over here. So what this is doing is basically allowing us the access to be able to access all this API. So the first API that they have by default is slash public API slash users. So I'm going to click on send. All right, there you go. So when we just ran that, it actually failed. It says authentication failed. And that's probably because I just need to reload it since we changed the token. And if I just run it again, do send. Okay, perfect. So this time it worked. So we are getting 200 okay and everything is working as expected. And if you notice here in the response, we are getting total um, 2,221 total count. And we can basically see the details of all those results over here. So let's say when you're doing your API testing, one of your test case could be making sure that you're getting the right attributes. So we just talked about that. You're getting your ID, first name, last name. You also wanna make sure that you're getting your email and date of birth. You can also ensure that the data return is not empty or it's in the right format, etc. Okay, so what we are gonna do now is, for example, we have access to this ID here, which is 12988. So I'm gonna copy this and then just choose users slash and then paste that ID over here. And then I hit send. All right, so this time what it did was it just returned us a single user, which is the user we just searched for, and we got the details of that particular user. So this is another way of making sure that the in the user's API or the overall API that the data you were getting back, you can actually validate an individual ID and get the data of that ID. So maybe we can play around now, let's say with the status. And um, for example, what I can do is I can go to put and actually they have patch here instead of put, which is kind of the same thing. So with patch, it also allows you to update your data. And actually, if I go to the first tab here, you can actually see it over here. So they have uh, the supported verbs. So you will see your get, post, and then patch. So you, if you notice here, they're saying we can use patch ID, user ID to update the data, or we can use put user ID to update the user data. So in this scenario, let's use patch. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit send without doing anything. So we got the response back as expected. So it was 200 okay. So what basically happened is we just trying to update the data, but obviously we didn't really provide it any data. So nothing really changed. But since we talked about updating the status, so let's do that. What I'm gonna do is copy status here, put in over here and then change the value from active to maybe um, inactive. So I'll just do that. So let's hit send. So if I come here, okay, there you go. So this works. If I just change status from active to inactive, so maybe in some APIs, you probably can already provide active or inactive. Let's try if we to put some junk here, see if that works. Okay, so it didn't work. So that, so this is good. So in their validation, they're actually making sure you can only pass in active or inactive. So this way they're saying the status is invalid. So this is also kind of doing your negative testing and you can make sure, hey, the user should not be able to provide any other status other than active or inactive. So you can do your data validation this way. So now let's do another use case where we are trying to actually create a new user. So what I'll do is go to post since we use post to create a data and then I will remove the ID here since for post we are just doing it on slash users and then I will also cancel this. What I'm going to do is just hit send without actually providing any data. And when I do that, all right, so we are getting this data validation error again. And if you notice in the error, this time the error is different. It's actually telling us what fields we need to provide or basically what fields are mandatory here. So it's saying email cannot be blank, first name, last name, and gender cannot be blank. So now we know the data that we need to provide for order in order to be able to create a new user. So typically in when you will be doing your API testing, your developers are maybe you might have an API spec that you can go through, which will actually tell you for your post, which data you need to provide or for your put, what data you need to send. So this way you don't have to guess it or actually do a manual testing this way to be able to figure out which data you need to send out. Sometimes this works out in this scenario, I didn't know, so I just hit send and it gave us this error. So let's do that. So what we're gonna do is provide first name, last name and email and gender. So I will add in here. So we'll add first name and then let's name this John and we'll do last name can do John Snow and then I can do gender email and we have what uh, we have email so I can just do uh, John Snow at mail.ca all right so let's hit send Okay, so that failed and the reason that failed is because it's saying that gender is invalid. So in this scenario, it's not taking that gender. 
so and I am not actually sure which gender it takes here so let's do this so what I'm gonna do is go back to our users open this up to see the expected data we get back so if I go down um, let's see in our gender we are getting male okay so we don't have to provide male with capital M we have to do it um, small m so that's case sensitive so what I'm gonna do is change this to male and then hit send all right perfect this time it worked so it's saying 200 okay everything is good and if you see this our data is not created so we have our ID which is this this is a random generated ID and then we have Jon Snow male and then we have this email created now what we can do is um, for example by the way if I try to hit send now it will fail because it will say this email already exists so let's try this out what I'm gonna do before that is copy this ID and I will hit send all right so this fail and it's saying is that Jon Snow already has been taken so we cannot create the same user with the same email so basically we just went through this API testing we created a user we tried to again try to do a negative testing by creating the same user with the same email and then this failed so I hope you're understanding the differences here between doing the UI testing and the API testing so with UI testing we would have to wait until all this API have been built the UI have been built and then we would have been doing this testing manually by putting in the email and then putting the email again to see if that's working but in this scenario what we just did is without even going through UI just through our API verified whether the email logic is actually working or not so because if for example if this was not working here when the UI would implement if the logic is not implemented on the UI side that would have failed too. I hope you now understand the power of doing API testing and how it works and why basically API testing is important. Alright so in the next video we will talk about what technologies we will be using to automate our API testing process using JavaScript. So if you enjoyed this video please give it a like and make sure to subscribe to my channel to keep watching more content like this. That's it for this video guys I will see you in the next one.